let's start this off with a quick update on Juan Soto. John Morosi tweeted out last night that Juan Soto has offers from five teams. Source confirms the report by Randy Miller. You got the Red Sox, Yankees, Mets, Dodgers, and the Blue Jays. We got Brendan Cootie also tweeting out this morning saying offers for Juan Soto are expected to go through multiple rounds. The first round is expected to be preliminary, meant to gauge genuine interest from all parties. The following offers rounds, which could start around next week, are expected to become increasingly more serious, weeding out candidates and seemingly point toward a winner meetings-ish decision time frame. Now, I'm going to be very honest. I really hope Juan Soto signs by the time the winter meetings start, which is in a couple of weeks. I feel like the last couple of years, the winter meetings have been a little lackluster. It's the most fun time of the offseason. I want action at the winter meetings. So it'll be great if a giant domino like Juan Soto falls by that time, because then these teams that don't land Juan Soto can turn their attention to the other big free agents on the board, on the position player side of things. Guys like Willie Adamas, Alex Bregman, Teoscar Hernandez, Anthony Santander. Uh, absolutely. On the pitching side of things, Corbin Burns, Max Freed, Blake Snell, Jack Flaherty. So yeah, I think everyone is hoping that Juan Soto will be off the board by that time. Now, if I were to make a prediction, which teams make it to those final rounds, I will say it's going to come down to the Mets, Yankees, and the Red Sox. I, I just don't think the Blue Jays have enough to sell at this point. Yes, they got the money. They can definitely make a fat offer, but when it comes to the player development side of things, they're not looking all that great. Vlad isn't signed up to an extension, so I'm not sure what Soto's going to think about the future of the Blue Jays. I can see the Dodgers kind of hanging back saying, if you don't get the offer you're looking for, you know, maybe we can come up with something a bit creative for you. We can bring you to LA, uh, but I do think it's going to come down to the the Mets, the Yankees, and the Red Sox. We'll have to keep our eyes on this this week. Speaking of the other free agents out there, the Phillies are showing some interest in a couple of infielders in Alex Bregman and Willie Adamas. Now, you might be thinking here, Robbie, why would the Phillies want a third baseman in Alex Bregman or a shortstop in Willie Adamas that could slide over to third base when they already have Alec Bohm? Well, reports recently are suggesting that Alec Bohm could be on the trade block. A.J. Brzezinski over on foul territory also talked about that there could be some concerns with the maturity, maybe some attitude issues with Alec Bohm over the last couple of years and his performance did dip in the second half this year he did have a wrist injury towards the end of the year but he came back and he wasn't really performing all that well ended up getting benched in the postseason could that be due to both performance and maybe the attitude issues that we've been hearing about who knows but with Alec Bohm he did end up having a pretty solid year he hit 280 a 332 on base a 448 on the slugging a 115 WRC plus 15 homers a 3.5 F war overall still has two more years of control until he gets to free agency so yeah he has good value he could definitely bring back something for this Phillies team that is looking to refresh some things right try to work around the edges as Dave Dombrowski has said uh, when it comes to Alec Bohm yeah he could definitely bring back something maybe for the rotation maybe something for the bullpen right Carlos Estevez Jeff Hoffman they are free agents who knows if they come back so maybe he could help beef up the bullpen maybe bring in an outfielder right you got Brandon Marsh Johan Rojas out and uh, left and center right now Johan is more you know, a, a speedy defensive kind of a guy. The bat has been lacking a bit. Brandon Marsh has some platoon risk. There's also been talks of Nick Castellanos being on the trade block as well. The defense is an issue with him out in right field. So who knows what this outfield is going to look like for the Phillies, you know, in 2025. But Alec Bohm, he could definitely bring back something that could help you out in the outfield. Now, when it comes to a third baseman, if you were to move on from Alec Bohm, we just mentioned Willie Adamas and Alex Bregman. Now, I think back to what Dave Dombrowski said not too long ago. He says they don't necessarily need to bring in a star player, right? They need to really just work on the edges of the team. Uh, Willie Adamas, Alex Bregman would be huge upgrades, but how far is Dave Dombrowski willing to go? I mean, you already have a lot of beef in this lineup already. You got Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, Kyle Schwarber, you know, Nick Castellanos, if he does stay, still a pretty solid bat, JT Romuto. So they already got a lot of money tied up in these guys. Are they willing to give out another big contract in Willie Adamas or Alex Bregman? I mean, yeah, they would definitely be upgrades for the Phillies at third base, no doubt about it, right? These guys have been very solid over the last couple of years here. Bregman especially, a proven postseason performer. He would definitely be a boost for the Phillies. In the end, I just wonder how far the Phillies are willing to go. I feel like right now they need to be focusing on the outfield here. They need to focus on 
you know, adding to this bullpen a little bit, maybe something for the rotation, you know, Garrett Crochet, they have been tied with him. Uh, let's see if they can get a deal done for him. Maybe they could send back Justin Crawford in a deal. Uh, that would be a huge upgrade for this rotation. A one, two, three of Wheeler, Nola, and Crochet, along with Sanchez. You know, let's see what happens with Ranger Suarez, if he stays or not. But that would be a great rotation there. But Alec Bohm, I definitely can see him getting moved. But when it comes to Adamas and Bregman, I don't know. I just wonder how far the Phillies would be willing to go for these guys. Up next, let's talk the Blue Jays. And Bob Nightingale is reporting that the Blue Jays are interested in free agent outfielder Anthony Santander. And they're also pursuing top pitchers like Corbin Burns and Max Freed. They've also been connected with Blake Snell. Now, the Blue Jays, they're coming off a disappointing year, a record of 74 and 88. The offense had a lot of issues this year outside of Lag Jr. He was fantastic in 2024. I don't know what's taking so long and getting an extension worked out. The Blue Jays got the money. Pay this man. My goodness, get that worked out. But the Blue Jays need to add something to this offense. I mean, they do also need to get Bo Bichette going. He had a disaster of a season this past year, so hopefully a bounce back year for him. Hopefully George Springer can get something going. That contract is starting not to look very good. Varsho, you'd like to get a bit more out of him as well. Maybe some of these young guys like Will Wagner can provide something, but I think it would make a lot of sense for them to go after someone like Anthony Santander. You know, sure, pretty low batting average, pretty low on base, but this guy brings the power, 44 home runs, a 506 slugging, a 129 WRC+. Plus. Not great defense out there, but I think Santander would be a formidable bat to help take some pressure off some of these other guys. Him and Vlad in the middle, I think would be a great one-two punch. Now, when it comes to the pitching, I do think they're actually pretty solid with the rotation. You got Gosman, you got Bassett, you got Barrios, Francis, Yorio Rodriguez. So adding someone like Corbin Burns would be amazing. Could you imagine a one-two punch of Corbin Burns and Kevin Gosman? My goodness. Uh, we know how good Corbin Burns is. No question about that. Uh, he's going to get himself a fat contract this offseason. I just wonder if Corbin Burns would want to go to the Blue Jays. Something that he has said uh, when it comes to a team that he chooses is he's, he wants that team to have a good long-term future. The Blue Jays' farm system doesn't rank very well at this time. Vlad Jr. is not signed up to an extension. So I wonder what interest he has in the Blue Jays at this point. I don't know. I would say out of these two, you know, Anthony Santander, I think is more likely to go there. Now, maybe someone like Max Freed could be interested, you know, but same thing here, you know, Corbin Burns, you know, he wants to go to a team with a good outlook for the future. Uh, who knows what Max Freed feels about that. But if he does, you know, if he is looking at the future of a team, I could see that as well. Uh, but Santander, you know, this is a, I think a position of a bat they need to go after. They need to add some power to that order. They need to get another threat in that lineup. I would love to see Santander in this lineup. Moving on to the White Sox, and all the talk lately has been around Garrett Crochet, but don't forget about Luis Robert. Bob Nightingale got a quote recently from a GM saying, you've got to hope he finally stays healthy and can be the player everyone envisioned all along. But the White Sox are acting like he's some big star center fielder and are asking for your top prospects. Now, I do think Luis Robert is a star, when he's healthy. That's been the issue in his career. He can't stay on the field. This year, only played 100 games overall, hit 224, a 278 on base, a 379 slugging, an 84 WRC plus, 14 homers, missed a lot of time with a hip injury this year. So that really threw him out of whack. But when he's healthy, this guy, I think, is a star. Had a great season in 2023, played the most games of his career at that point, hit 264, a 315 on base, a 542 slugging, a 128 WRC plus, 38 homers. 20 stolen bases, great defense in center field. Sure, strikeout rate over the last couple of years has been high. You would like to see the walks be a bit higher there, but Luis Robert, he can do a lot of damage when he's healthy, but that's the key phrase right there, when he's healthy. Now, I could see a couple situations with Luis Robert for this offseason. I could see him maybe going somewhere where I could see the White Sox saying, you know what, if he gets hurt again, then his value is really just going to tank. Sure, he's on a team-friendly deal. He's only getting paid $15 million this year. There are a couple of club options for him for 26 and 27, 20 million bucks each. But with Luis Robert, if he gets hurt again, well then, I mean, I don't know if teams would really want to take him at this point. I could see a situation where the White Sox feel like they have to move on from him now and not risk, you know, another injury popping up. But then I could also just see him staying, right? You know, they take that chance uh, and he ends up being healthy, has a good first half of the year, and then he could be a big bat at the trade deadline. I think it could go either way for him, but 
with the injuries, his value has tanked. And yeah, from the White Sox point of view, it's early in the offseason, so they're probably asking for a lot. Maybe they could end up coming down on the price at some point by the end of the offseason. I would imagine, you know, guys like, you know, Teoscar Hernandez, Anthony Santander, Tyler O'Neill are going to come off the board. And maybe teams that miss out on those guys, if they make a run for them, maybe they could turn to the White Sox. But again, it comes down to finding the right price. Uh, yeah, Chris Getz, he's probably going to want to try and get a lot back in return. Uh, maybe he could end up paying down some of the contract a little bit uh, for this year to end up getting a little bit more. But in the end, you know, Robert, I think it's 50-50 at this point. It, you know, you never know what happens in an offseason. Things are always fluid. I would say 50-50. Uh, there's definitely some teams out there. I think the Orioles could be a good fit, possibly. Cedric Mullins is coming up on free agency. Maybe they can make some moves there. We talked about the Phillies a little bit earlier. I feel like they could use an upgrade offensively out in center field uh they have enough offense where you know if he does go down again well then you'd have some guys that could still pick up the pace in that lineup there so robert you know i definitely think there's some fits out there but i found this quote from the gm out there very interesting up next let's talk to atlanta braves and according to ken rosenthal the braves are looking for an outfielder preferably left-handed now recently they non-tendered ramon loriano which did catch some people by surprise he put up some okay numbers with the braves this year a 108 wrc plus a 437 on the slugging 11 home runs especially with ronald acuna jr having to get surgery on his knee people thought that loriano would be a good outfielder to keep in the fold but when you think of the babip here with loriano it was very high at a 350 when you take a look at the advanced metrics you got a lot of blues here sure barrel percentage sweet spot were pretty pretty high, but the plate discipline was not very good. Average exit velocity was pretty middle of the road. So I think the Braves are looking to make an upgrade here. Now you do have someone like Jared Kalnick out in left field, but the numbers weren't all that great with him this year. Only hit 231, a 393 on the slugging. So I could see them looking to make an upgrade. Jared Kelnick could be more of a bench option. Now you got a few options out here. Now, Michael Conforto, I think could be pretty interesting an everyday option. Now with him uh, at Oracle this year, had 20 homers, had a 450 slugging, a 112 WRC plus, but Oracle, you know, being a pitcher friendly park had some pretty decent advanced metrics here. I think that could translate a lot better to Atlanta. I think Conforto would be a great fit. I don't think he's going to be all that expensive either. I think that could be something that Alex Anthopoulos could be intrigued in. He usually doesn't go out there and go crazy with the free agent signings, but I think Conforto could be in that range that he could be looking for, you know, maybe a two, three year deal or so anywhere from, you know, maybe 15 to 16, 17, maybe $18 million per year. I could see something like that. Uh, another option out there is Alex Verdugo. Now, not a great year this year with the numbers. Only hit 233, a 291 on base, uh, 83 WRC plus, you know, sure, 13 homers, but these are pretty dreadful numbers. Now, he did play every day this year for a team that was in the World Series, ended up making the final out in the World Series, but Alex Verdugo is a guy that can do some things. He makes a lot of contact. Uh, he's pretty disciplined at the plate. Doesn't really strike out all that much. Uh, Verdugo is also a pretty good defender out there, but I think in the end, you know, you got Jared Kelnick. I don't really see why you would want Verdugo. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you could turn to him. Now, I think another intriguing option could be Max Kepler. This is a guy that had a, a bit of a down year, had a lot of injuries this year, only played 105 games, had a 94 WRC+. Plus. Now, when you take a look at the advanced metrics going back to 2023, he actually had a lot of reds here. Uh, so I wonder if maybe the injuries were slowing him down this year. He had a lot of blues. So maybe Anthopoulos could see a good bargain here with Kepler, maybe bring him in on like a one-year deal. I could see Anthopoulos doing that. Uh, but look for the Atlanta Braves to make an upgrade in the outfield this offseason. And last but not least, I got to talk about my Red Sox. And I know here come the Giraffnik Robbie comments. Here come the comments saying Robbie's talking about the Red Sox way too much lately on this channel. But what do you want me to do? I talk baseball here on this channel and the Red Sox just so happen to be a baseball team. They're in the news. I got to talk about the news and the Red Sox plan to be involved in the bidding for all of the top free agents, according to Bob Nightingale. He goes on to say here, this is why they met with Soto, told everyone how it went, informed agents that they not only want to sign one of the marquee free agent pitchers in Corbin Burns, Max Fried, and Blake Snell, but actually want to sign two. That is 
insane to me. Now, we all know they're going after Juan Soto. I do think they're going to put on the full court press. Will they land him? I don't know. I think it's more likely he goes to the Mets or goes back to the Yankees. But I know the Red Sox, they're going to put in a good effort at the end of the day. But if they don't get him, well, hey, they're around $65 million under the CBT. They'll definitely have some money to play with, with getting some pitching that they do need. I think there's a good floor with the rotation, but they need to add more ceiling here. They need something to go alongside Tanner Houck at the top. Corbin Burns, one of the best pitchers in Major League Baseball going back over the last few years now, would be an amazing ad for them. I could see Corbin Burns being interested in coming to the Red Sox. Earlier, I mentioned the Blue Jays. You know, the outlook with their farm system is not looking all that great right now, so I don't know if Burns would be interested in going there, but I could see the Red Sox where their farm system is in a lot better shape, and they've really revamped the pitching department within the organization over the last year or so since Craig Breslow came in. You brought in Andrew Bailey, one of the better pitchers coaches in the game so I could see potential here with Corbin Burns coming into the fold I can also see them bringing in one of these left-handed pitchers in Blake Snell and Max Freed they do need a lefty in the rotation now I think there's an advantage with both Blake Snell is going to be more of a strikeout stuff kind of a guy with him you know there seems to be something with him over the last few years whether it's a high walk rate injuries uh he had a bad first half this year he signed late in the spring training last year had a great second half though Blake Snell he brings a good amount to the table that Craig Breslow likes. Craig Breslow likes swing and miss in the zone. Blake Snell had one of the best rates with that this past year, has one of the best rates with that going back over the last few years. Blake Snell's also probably not going to require a long-term deal like Corbin Burns. You know, Burns probably going to be getting a seven, eight-year deal maybe. I could see Snell leaning more towards, you know, maybe a four or five-year deal, and he would not cost a draft pick. He was not eligible for the qualifying offer. So I could definitely see Blake Snell coming to Boston. Now, Max Fried, on the other hand, not really too much of a strikeout guy, more of a a pitch to contact kind of a guy, but he's been very solid over the years. But I wonder with Max Fried, if they think they could take him to the next level, you know, he had some pretty good stuff on the cutter and his sinker this past year compared to the four seamer, the Red Sox this year, the strategy that they took was getting away from weaknesses and focusing on strength. So I could see a situation where if they bring in Max Fried, they have him throw less of the four seamer, lean more on the sinker and the cutter and maybe they feel like they can take him to the next level freed will also probably have a cheaper aav than blake snell so maybe that could be something there he would cost a draft pick though uh, either way you know i could see either blake snell or max freed but both corbin burns and either one of these lefties i mean that would be massive my goodness now i will say this i do wonder if maybe the red Sox are starting to lean away from garrett crochet you're starting to hear the phillies tied more with him as of late because if you bring in you know if they have plans at least on bringing in Burns and one of the lefties and you're going to get crochet I don't know that just seems like I mean where are you going to fit all these guys you know the Red Sox you know they got Lucas Giolito coming back in 25 so I don't know I feel like you're not hearing too much on the crochet front as of late I could see them focusing on the free agent guys like Burns and one of these lefties but in the end We'll just have to wait and see. But everyone, uh, tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. What do you think of all the stories we talked about today? Let me know. But everyone, that's all I got for this video. If you can on the way out, hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll talk to you next time.